Hello, my name is Dr. Art Rastenhat. Welcome to today's talk on MR segmentation, the truth. Be aware. Why do I say this? This talk is to emphasize the utter importance of high quality MR segmentation. Low quality imaging, as well as poor segmentation, will lead you to poor results with your MR ultrasound fusion guided biopsy platforms. I will be covering Euronab MR fusion techniques and tricks for MR segmentation of the prostate. Before we begin, we always have some disclaimers. This course is for educational purposes only. It allows our physicians to review the material after attending one of our hands-on courses. It is not to be used to direct patient care or a substitute for actual hands-on training. Before we begin, I think it's important to understand how the technology works. Fusion technology uses three components. The first is the MR imaging. The second is the software used to combine the ultrasound and the MR images together, and this is accomplished through surface rendering, which I'll describe in a moment. The third component is the tracking mechanisms. In this platform I'll be discussing today, it uses electromagnetic tracking. Other technologies use different ways to solve this problem, but tracking itself allows for the real-time ultrasound imaging to be combined to allow you to target and track the prostate. This is an example of surface rendering. See those small triangles on the contour of the prostate? Well, these contours and triangles are created both for the ultrasound and the MRI, and we're able mathematically to combine them together to match the data sets to allow you to target specific areas within the prostate. This is a simplified version of co-registration or fusion. The co-registration of two data sets, if you look on the left side of the screen before registration, you see image one and image two. These two images are not aligned. While using the corners or those things that are labeled as fiducials, and we're able to take that data set and line it up. For surface rendering, we use the triangles as our fiducials. And after we line up the data set, you're able to see the target and the fiducials align, but it's usually not perfect. There's always a degree of target registration error, which is labeled TRE, which is your point of interest, as well as the surface rendering or the fiducial registration error, which is also represented on the right side of the screen. MRI segmentation. This is the basic truth. It allows you to create and move your data into a 3D space from the MRI into your office using the MR ultrasound fusion guided platforms. Any errors in segmentation will cause you to be off target, remove any relationships that are meaningful to help you improve your biopsy, and pretty much makes your MRI useless. In the next video, I will be showing you an uncut case approximately six minutes long. Typically, this is a little bit longer than my usual time to segment a prostate. However, I made some mistakes and other pitfalls to show you how to correct for them and how to use the Dynacad 3.3 software version efficiently. This is a multi-parametric MRI of one of my patients scheduled to undergo an MR ultrasound fusion guided biopsy. Notice how we scroll through. It's always important to see where the lesions are that you'll be targeting. It will help you understand how important segmentation is because you're building the relationships the urologist will be using to perform his fusion guided biopsy. Typically, I set up a multiplanar T2 weighted images, the axial, sagittal, and coronal views. This allows me to look for the edge of the prostate because at the apex and the base, it's sometimes very difficult to tell where the prostate ends and the fibromusculostromal area surrounding the prostate begin. As you see here, I'm lining up the segmentation. This is already done by the computer. This is a baseline segmentation that's automatically been done for you. Now it just requires a little bit of fine tuning. Notice how you can add or remove axial segmentation by using the sagittal or coronal screens to drag the prostate uh, mesh up or down. At this point, I'm just quickly aligning it, looking to see where the apex is. I use the correlation tool and turn it on. Now, as you segment, you can see the left screens move 
to allow us to use the information from the T2 weighted MRIs in triplanar. The segmentation is actually only based off the T2 weighted axial image, but sometimes it's helpful to be able to localize the apex of the prostate as well as the base. You can see me grabbing here, pulling and making small adjustments. Notice that yellow highlighted area, that's the elastic band that denotes how much of the prostate mold you'll be changing when you make adjustments. The larger it is, the more slices above and below that are affected. I typically look at the left side of the prostate, go up and down, do the right side of the prostate, go up and down through the axial slices and look at the anterior and posterior segments in the end to make sure everything lines up. As you see here, I'm making fine adjustments. And it's always important to include all portions of the prostate because you'll be using this information during your MR ultrasound fusion guided biopsy. Notice how the green segmentation outlines the entire prostate. However, if you didn't pick it up, there's some extra areas of prostate that are being captured that aren't actually prostate. And we'll go through and you'll see slight adjustments as you review this case. Currently, I'm just scrolling through to get a good idea of what's been segmented, what's been segmented correctly and what needs some adjustments. Every time you make an adjustment, understand that it, this can change above and below the area that you're observing on the axial slice. Again, I approved the prostate boundary just to show you how to go check your work. Now you can view in the axial T2 weighted screen, look at prostate localization. Now this overlays the T2 segmentation that you created. Maybe you're windowing slightly different so you can pick up errors in your segmentation. It is extremely important to have the T2 segmentation as close as possible because you're merging this data set with the ultrasound. We'll talk about ultrasound segmentation later in my talks. Today we're just focused on this MR, ultrasound, uh, MR segmentation as seen here. Notice that you must include the anterior fiber muscular stroma. However, vessels should not be included. The reason the anterior fiber muscular stroma is included because on ultrasound, the software picks up that region as part of the prostate. If you don't include it, your segmentation will be off. Here again, I'm checking my work prostate localization, you can see how well the segmentation has gone. There's some errors that I'm picking up. Are your eyes able to see the mistakes? I'm switching the sequences to try to work out where's the exact edge of the prostate. Notice how I use the correlation tool. This really helps to pinpoint the exact edge of where the apex is and where the peripheral zone stops. I think this is extremely difficult in the beginning when using this technology is localizing the exact point of the apex. Because if you don't, you're gonna shift your target higher or lower depending on what kind of air you're causing. If you have too much prostate at the apex, you'll be shifting your targets up towards the base because the MRI appears to be larger to the software system. And if you line up the apex edge, you're pushing everything up towards the base. Notice here that I'm making these small corrections I've decreased the size of my elastic band that manipulates changes in the STL or this mesh that you see created around the T2 axial segment. Again, I'm just scrolling up and down, making adjustments, clicking approve, moving back to the axial T2 image. And I, I can't reinforce this enough. If your segmentation is not correct, you will not be able to perform a successful biopsy. That's why I do recommend that the urologist review the segmentation before starting the procedure. It's also important for the urologist to review the prostate MRI to understand the relationship of the lesion in question that he'd be sampling and surrounding nodules to develop a, a cognitive approach for checking his work because it's important to understand what is going on during the procedure. Again, prostate localization, checking my work. Once you're sat up, once you're satisfied with the findings, you click save, and that's the end of this portion of the segmentation. In summary, MRI segmentation is a foundation. It's the basic truth we base our biopsy on because the MRI has a higher sensitivity and specificity than what we obtain with transrectal ultrasound. So 
I'd like to take a moment to take you back to when I talked about what surface rendering was, where it's lining up those triangles or shapes. Imagine you had poor segmentation. You see your, the left images that are not aligned and they're lined up at, on the right. Well, what if you got rid of some of the fiducials? You could place a triangle well in two positions, one in the opposite direction that of what you would have expected to find. Therefore, this can just reflect how poor segmentation can change the matching of the two data sets. And you should be aware of it because these are less points or inaccurate points will call your, cause your segmentation to be suboptimal. I'd like to say thank you for taking the time to review this session of the course. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to continue to find updates and new course material. For additional material, please visit our website at interventionalurology.com. If you have any questions, please tweet at me at Dr. Rastenhead hashtag, and any comments, please hashtag MRFusion. Thank you so much for your time, and please stay tuned for more updates.